Jealous, miserable people are always trying to figure out how you have what you have, how you did what you did. How is she with him? How is she working there? Why are people liking her so much? What is it about her? When you are safe and secure within yourself, you don't have to go around trying to figure out why somebody else's life is going the way it's going. But when a person is jealous, envious, and miserable, they're always trying to figure out why you are the way you are, why you have what you have. And they're always asking the question, how did you get that? Why is he with her? I'm going to stay there for a moment because jealous women, particularly jealous women, when they see a woman that they think is not really that cute, she's not really, you know, what they would say would be the beauty standard. And yet her husband, her boyfriend, he's fine. And they have the question, how did she pull him? Why is he with her? He can do better. He can do this. Why is she that? Oh, the kids must look like him. You know all the nasty things that the women say. And the reason why women oftentimes who think that they have it all don't have anything is because of that jealous, wicked, negative, mean spirit. Have you ever noticed that there are a lot of women who are traditionally beautiful in societal, you know, standards, by beauty standards? They are beautiful women, but yet they're single they don't really have any men coming after them and they're struggling for different opportunities in life. I think that when women, I'm going to stay on this topic of women being jealous of other women and what they have received and the favor they have on their life. The reason that happens, in my opinion, of course, is because when a woman feels like she is so beautiful and that things are just automatically going to flow to her and not in the feminine way, in the way that we understand as being classy and being positive and just knowing that things are going to work out for you. When a woman has a negative, jealous, energy draining spirit and she's beautiful on the outside, but she's wicked on the inside, that is the reason why things do not go well for her. Anybody for that matter, when you're looking at somebody's life and constantly critiquing it and trying to figure out why, that is the number one way, in my opinion, that you hold back your own blessings and you hold back your own way of moving forward in life. Jealous people love to sit around trying to figure out how something happened instead of working on their own life. Instead of getting quiet, getting with God and seeing how they can fix their own life, they go around critiquing other people's lives. You ever notice that people who do the least have the most to say or people with the most toxic negative spirit will approach you and say that you're angry or you're upset. See, what people don't understand is that happiness, true happiness and joy on the inside, it doesn't always look like a Kool-Aid grin. It could be somebody quietly living their life winning in private, having a peaceful home environment, having a healthy relationship, having good relationship with their kids or their extended family. It could be them taking quiet trips off by themselves. It could be enjoying a nice meal, having enough money to be comfortable and live their life. But jealous people don't understand that. They're used to seeing a show. They're used to so much talk. I don't know where I heard this from. I don't think it was scriptural, but it says that the more people talk, the less they do. It's like people who think that things are just going to be handed to them because it's them, because I'm cute. So it should be this way for me. Look at her and look at me. Well, who is she? It's because of the nasty negative attitude that you have as a woman, that things are not happening in the way you want it to happen. And then staying on the topic of relationship. A lot of time when a woman is beautiful, she automatically thinks that makes her an ideal candidate to be a wife or to be a girlfriend. And what a lot of women don't understand, especially jealous, evil, miserable, negative women that happen to be beautiful, a man, a real man, a masculine man, 
He doesn't want to deal with the woman who's going to be a headache. No matter how beautiful you are, he will absolutely probably sleep with you. He'll do that. But if you are a miserable, negative woman, you don't know peace. You don't know joy. You don't know how to treat other people. You can't be around other women without causing problems. No man wants to deal with that. No person wants to deal with that long term. It might be cute. In the moment, he might entertain that little misery, that little toxic thing you do because he's enjoying your body for a moment. But when he's done with you, he's done with you. Now he wants to deal with a woman who is not only beautiful, but she knows peace. She knows how to enjoy her life. She focuses on herself and her family. She doesn't have time to go around hating on the next woman or being jealous of other people or trying to figure out how she can sabotage somebody's life or trying to figure out why she's why he's with her. I've heard women say, why is he with her? He's too cute to be with her. Well, did you ever think that it's because the type of woman she is? Because he doesn't care about her beauty as much as he cares about the person she is. And then once again, beauty, that's subjective. I know, especially in the toxic way that unfortunately, a lot of black people like to, you know, Europeanize everything. We'll try to narrow out our noses, narrow out our heads, narrow out everything. And I'm not saying all of us do that, but I'm saying because of the brainwashing, many people don't understand that beauty is not just narrowed down to having a narrow nose, a small face, and all these other weird aesthetics that they put out there. But because of that kind of thinking, you'll have jealous women who think, well, I have this or I contour my face to this level. Why is he not coming after me and he's going after her? It's because you're, a, you're not a great person. That's the reason why, for lack of another word. But as women, we have to understand, and this is what you have to do. After you have recognized jealousy for what it is, and you know that there's going to be jealous people, especially when you're doing great things in life, when you're a kind woman, when you know how to take care of yourself and you have a standard, you are going to deal with people who are going to attempt to disrespect you all because of their jealousy. So how do you deal with that? You don't, number one. If you have the opportunity to get away from people who attempt to disrespect you and belittle you and make you feel less than all because of their jealousy, you don't want to be in the company of those people. But let's say you're in an environment where you can't so easily leave, like a work environment. I mean, you have some people, you have some managers, some supervisors who are jealous of their employees because the employees know more than them. This often happens when you have a new manager or a new supervisor come into a place where the employees have been there for a very long time. So they kind of have the lay of the land. They know how things go. And people often will come to them for advice or for instruction on how to do something before they come to the new supervisor. Especially if the woman, if the supervisor is a woman and she sees another woman being treated as if she's in charge opposed to her. Oh my goodness. You're going to have to watch out because yes, having your manager or supervisor be jealous of you, that is a real thing. I have not experienced that. And my current supervisor where they are very secure, okay, it's not about me. This is just an example and I've seen it in the workplace. When you have that, you have to expect that, okay, your supervisor, she might constantly pull you aside about different things. You're doing your job to the best of your ability, but yet she pulls you aside because she sees the favor that you get with the employees. You see, and she sees that they're coming to you for help opposed to her. And what a lot of supervisors have to understand, the employees really don't want that role. <laughs> they don't get paid for the role of doing your job. So for a supervisor to be intimidated by the fact that somebody's coming to another woman for advice, that's not really something they should do because to my understanding, people who have that happen to them, they really don't want that role. They don't get paid to be the manager. Go to them. So, but when you have that kind of authoritativeness in the workplace and people trust you and you're kind and you're nice, a lot of female supervisors will be jealous of you and they'll find any little reason to pull you aside, critique your job, do little things, say little things, just kind of pick at you all because they see people are coming to you before they go to them. That was just a little sidebar about how jealousy can kind of manifest itself in the workplace. And when that happens, 
in that instance at work, my motto has always been, I come to work to do my job. Nothing more, nothing less. I will absolutely direct the individuals to the supervisor. Look, go ahead into her office. She'll help you with that. If you need any of the help after that, I can help you. Look, just start, like, let her have the power. And when women are very concerned about being seen as powerful and they have to have the authority and the leadership, let them have it. That's more of a masculine trait to have anyway. Women who are in their femininity, they don't really want all that added responsibility. They don't want all the added headache of everybody constantly coming to them anyway. So pass it along to her and let her do her masculine leadership authorities, okay? Don't fight against jealousy in that way when you're in the workplace. If they want to pick up the load, and this is something I need you to understand, this is a little segue into femininity. If you're a woman who is in her femininity, embracing your softer side as a woman, and you are in the workplace around other women who are in that masculine way of being, they want to be in charge, they want to be in authority, they want everybody to come to them, let them have it. Don't make your, don't feel like you're less of an employee or you're not strong enough because you're not allowing people to dump all their problems and the work and come to you for instruction. They have people who get paid to do that. You stay in your feminine lane, do your job, type up your papers and go home. Let the women, if the women want to be an authority on your job, even when they're not, that's more of a more masculine thing to do. Let them have it. You want to lift the water? Go ahead. You want to do the team lead? You want to be a team lead? Go ahead. You want to start the project? You go ahead. My other motto, let somebody else do it, okay? Never fight against jealousy in that way in the workplace. But coming back to how jealous women, when they see you having everything they think you don't deserve, you have to really kind of pity those women and understand that because they went for the aesthetic of being a beautiful woman and thinking that things are just handed to them because of how they look and they neglected their character, that's why they're jealous of you. See, when they see you being beautiful and the way you carry yourself and people flock to that, you're more magnetic in that way, they will express jealousy toward you. They will try to make it seem like, oh, well, he's cute and she's not really, you know, he's probably cheating on her. I've heard these kind of toxic conversations. I'm not making this stuff up. And I'm sure that many of you have probably heard women say that. Oh, he's too cute to be with her. He's probably cheating. All that kind of negativity. You see, jealous people have to understand when you talk like that and act like that, you will never succeed in life. You will never have people who want to come to your rescue or help you or be there for you because you're a miserable human being. People are repelled by negative, especially women, when you show yourself to be unfeminine, masculine, and have a jealous spirit too, no man or woman wants to deal with that. So when you encounter women who are jealous, who are negative, who act like you don't deserve everything you have, you just have to say a quick prayer for them on the inside and you have to understand, and this is how you can avoid taking their negativity and their jealousy personal, you have to look at them and understand that they're unhappy. And when people are unhappy in their lives and they feel like the way you live is what they deserve and they don't have it and they're mad, you have to really just pity them and you have to pray for them and treat them with as much kindness as you can. And if you can't do that, just stay away from them and try to avoid being around that because that negative spirit will rub off on you and you don't want to get into the mode of matching the energy of jealous, toxic people. And when you're around women, especially women who are negative, miserable, and toxic long enough, you will begin to adapt their mentality and you don't want that. So when jealous people see you living the life and having everything they think you don't deserve, you have to pray for them, you have to get away from them, and just let them be to themselves, all right? Like and subscribe to this channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.